Rwanda, a nation that has risen from the ashes of one of the darkest chapters in human history, the 1994 genocide against Tutsi. But how does a country, once torn apart by deadly violence ever, build one of the most sophisticated intelligence agencies in Africa? It began not with guns or soldiers, but with spies. Spies infiltrating borders as early as 1987, gathering secrets in preparation for what was to come. The Rwandan Patriotic Army knew even then that wars aren't only won with bullets, they're won with intelligence. And at the center of it all, one man, Paul Kagame, trained in military intelligence in Tanzania, hardened in the crucible of Uganda's wars and sharpened in the secret intelligence schools of Cuba. Kagame didn't just lead an army, he built an empire of intelligence, an empire that thrives in the shadows, where secrets are currency and failure is not an option. Intelligence. The word rarely uttered by politicians and kept at a distance by the media, you don't hear it, you don't see it, and yet it moves the world. Rwanda's intelligence, quiet, sharp, relentless, is rated among the best in the world. It's a service that even developed nations, with all their technology and might, come to learn from. In 2015, Rwanda quietly alerted Belgium to a plot, an attack brewing in the shadows. Belgium dismissed the warning. Four months later, on March 22, 2016, terrorists struck Brussels. Bombs detonated, lives lost. Too late. They realized that Rwanda's intelligence had seen it all. This is the power of Rwanda's National Intelligence and Security Service, NISS. a rated among the best, and they knew before anyone else. Today, you'll hear the story of NISS, a story of spies, covert missions, and the leaders who keep it all in motion. Stay with us as we pull back the curtain on one of Africa's most secretive intelligence agencies and what it truly means to keep a nation secure. This is Jackson as always. I'm your documentarian servant. Welcome to the world of research. Welcome to the large family of Win Wisdom in Narrations. To understand NISS, you need to go back to the 1980s. The Rwandan Patriotic Army, RPA, was fighting a war, not just for survival, but for liberation. In 1987, intelligence operatives infiltrated Rwanda, gathering information for an eventual attack. Intelligence was more than strategy, it was the path to victory. And at the center of it all, Paul Kagame, a man who understood intelligence like no other. In 1978, Kagame, then just 21, was sent to Tanzania to study military intelligence. His training continued in Cuba in 1987, refining the skills that would become the backbone of Rwanda's intelligence apparatus. Kagame didn't just lead an army, he built an empire of intelligence. By 1994, Rwanda's intelligence had become a force that not only fought wars, but won them before they even began. After the genocide against Tutsi in 1994, Rwanda needed a shield, something that would ensure it would never again be caught off guard. That shield became NISS, established under Law No. 73-2013, later enhanced by Law No. 10-2017, NISS was tasked with the job of protecting the nation through intelligence. Unlike many intelligence agencies that operate in the shadows with minimal oversight, NISS is a cornerstone of Rwanda's national security strategy. It's structured into key divisions. Internal intelligence. Safeguarding Rwanda from domestic threats. External intelligence. Monitoring international risks. Immigration and emigration. Securing Rwanda's borders. But make no mistake, NISS isn't an ordinary intelligence service. Its efficiency, its reach, and its success have placed it among the elite. Even nations like the United States, Israel and Belgium come to Rwanda to learn. The total structure of NISS. NISS's financial independence is one of its core strengths. 
Its budget is approved and managed in accordance with state budget laws, ensuring that the agency has the resources it needs. NISS's property comprises both movable and immovable assets, sourced from state budget allocations. Collaboration is at the heart of NISS's mission. The agency works closely with other security organs as well as public and private institutions, both domestically and internationally, to safeguard Rwanda's security interests. NISS intelligence officers are armed and authorized to use firearms as part of their duties, with authorization for the importation of firearms granted by the Office of the President. This ensures agents have the necessary tools to perform their tasks effectively. The agency's officers have the powers of judicial police, allowing them to initiate investigations in any Rwandan institution without needing prior approval, if required for security reasons. These powers are vital for ensuring a proactive approach to national security. NISS also has the power to intercept communications when necessary in compliance with relevant laws. This capability is key to identifying and neutralizing threats before they become critical. Classifying and declassifying intelligence reports and materials is another critical responsibility of NISS. A presidential order determines the classification of restricted matters, and internal rules establish the procedures for handling confidential information. These measures ensure that sensitive information remains secure. NISS is composed of multiple directorates and departments designed to optimize its effectiveness. The General Secretariat, Directorate General of Administration and Finance, Directorate General of Internal Intelligence and Security, Directorate General of External Intelligence and Security, Directorate General of Immigration and Immigration. The number of Directorates General can be adjusted by a presidential order, providing flexibility for NISS to adapt to changing needs. The leadership of NISS is carefully structured to maintain accountability and effectiveness. The Secretary General and Deputy Secretary General serve four-year terms, which are renewable, while Directors General have five-year terms, also renewable. Before assuming office, these officials take an oath as prescribed by the Constitution of Rwanda, underscoring their commitment to national duty. Senior officials of NISS are appointed by a presidential order, and other staff members are appointed in accordance with the special statute governing NISS staff established by presidential order. The number of staff members is determined based on the agency's budget. Senior officials of NISS can leave office for several reasons, including violation of the constitution or other laws, incompetence, health issues certified by medical professionals, or criminal convictions, such as crimes related to genocide. They may also leave office upon the expiration of their term or in the case of death. Other staff members of NISS are subject to specific statutes governing their employment, ensuring that the integrity of the agency is maintained at all levels. Benefits for senior officials and staff of NISS are determined by a presidential order, reflecting the importance of their role in safeguarding national security. Former intelligence officers who have served with dignity become part of the intelligence reserve personnel and may be called upon to assist if needed. Leaders of Rwanda's intelligence at the helm of this formidable agency are men who have shaped Rwanda's intelligence framework. Until 2024, Major General Joseph Nzabamwita served as the Secretary General, overseeing both internal and external operations. Joseph played a key role in turning NISS into what it is today. His replacement, Amabel Havugiaremia, previously Rwanda's Prosecutor General, took over the reins on June 12, 2024. Supporting him is Brigadier General John Paul Nirubutama, the Deputy Secretary General responsible for Rwanda's external intelligence, and for internal affairs, John Bosco Ntibitura, a veteran in securing the nation from within. These leaders don't speak about their work. Intelligence isn't discussed on the evening news, and for good reason. They lead a service that strikes quietly, surgically, and without warning. For them, the shadows are home.
In 2015, Rwanda's intelligence made international headlines. They warned Belgium. A terrorist plot was underway. The warning was dismissed. Four months later, the March 22, 2016 attacks in Brussels shocked the world. Rwanda had seen it coming. It was a pivotal moment, earning Rwanda's intelligence a top rating, A+, from the global intelligence community. And since then, the world has taken notice. Rwanda is now seen as a leader in intelligence work. It is often called upon by other nations to help prevent crimes, detect threats, and share expertise. Rwanda strikes before it is struck. That is its mantra. While Rwanda's NISS is a beacon of intelligence prowess, it shares its name with another agency operating in Ethiopia. Both are known as NISS, but they are fundamentally different. Ethiopia's NISS focuses heavily on counterterrorism in the Horn of Africa. In other hand, Rwanda's NISS is more broad in scope, covering internal security, international espionage, and border control. Both agencies are powerful, but Rwanda's NISS has positioned itself as an elite global player in intelligence sharing and crime prevention, even working closely with countries like the United States and Israel. You have to know this. The headquarters of NISS is located in Kigali City at Kimihurura, near Minadef and the Prime Minister's office. As of 2024, in addition to its presence in Rwanda, NISS also operates in Eastern Africa, Belgium and the United States. Intelligence isn't something you see, it isn't something you hear about, but in Rwanda it is everything. From the days of the Rwandan Patriotic Army to the highly rated NISS of today, Rwanda's intelligence has remained its first line of defense, quiet, relentless, and always one step ahead. This is Jackson as always. I'm your documentarian servant. I wish you better life, foods, and money. Thanks for watching. Thank you.